In this short video, I'm gonna show you how to make a repeating pattern using Adobe Illustrator's built-in pattern making tool. You can do this even if you're a beginner and have no Illustrator experience. Make sure you watch to the end because I'm gonna show you how to fill your fashion flats with your pattern and change the size of it so it scales correctly. I'm So Heidi, founder of SuccessfulFashionDesigner.com and you're watching Fashion Industry Secrets Revealed. So to start off, I've got some motifs drawn and I just drew these very simply with the pencil tool. If you wanna draw some motifs with the pencil tool, grab your pencil tool, hotkey letter N, and you simply just drag and wait till you see that little closed circle to get a closed shape and there's your shape. You can fill it with color over here and create all sorts of little blobs of shape to fill with color and use for your pattern. So I've pre-drawn all of my little shapes and you can use any type of artwork you have. Maybe you've got some little shapes, maybe you've got some other artwork that you've used, created using other tools. Whatever you've got doesn't matter. We're gonna select our artwork and we're gonna come up to Object, Pattern, Make. What that's gonna do is it's gonna add a swatch to the panel over here and we're gonna click OK. Our pattern options panel should come up over on the right and we've got a few settings that we might wanna pay attention to. The first thing we have is our tile type. We can create a grid repeat, which is essentially a single tile that repeats on a straight grid, meaning the tile repeats to the right and to the left and to the top and to the bottom on a straight repeat. We can also do a brick by row, meaning it's offset horizontally, brick by column, offset vertically, and some of these other wacky ones. I don't really ever use these. In my experience, you don't really need to to get the look and feel that you want. And if you're taking this and turning it into artwork that's gonna be printed at a factory or at Spoonflower, this can get a little bit tricky. So I'd stick to brick by row, brick by column, or grid. So in this example, we're just gonna start with a grid and see if that gives us the results we want. A couple other settings in here that we can change. We can change the width and the height of our repeat. If I need this to be 600, that's now wider and that gives me a little bit more space to move my motifs around, so on and so forth. We can also change the number of copies that we see on our artboard. So depending on the size of your repeat, you might need to see more copies. So now that gives us seven by seven. The other setting I do like to do is turn on the dim copies. This means this artwork is just a copy and these are the actual art objects that create the repeat itself. This is a nice setting because as I move some of my motifs around, I might become unsure which one's the actual object that I need to move and which one's the copy. If I've got this turned off, I might try to move this and I can't and it's a little bit frustrating. The one I need to move is this because this is just the visual copy of that as the repeat tile. So I turn that on and that helps me visualize what I'm doing a little better. I'm going to go ahead and give myself a little bit more height to work with as well, 300. You can also turn on this option here, the pattern tile tool, and that lets you manually change the size of the repeat if you want as well. I'll turn that back off. And now I can use any of my artwork tools in here to move objects around. And I can even draw new artwork if I want. I'm not gonna do that in this example. We're just gonna take the artwork that we have and create the pattern. And so I'm just gonna kind of loosely toss these around. We're gonna create kind of a modern, fun, abstract cheetah spot print. So you'll take some time and I'm gonna zoom up this part so it's a little bit faster for you guys to watch. Okay, so now once you think you've got your layout dialed in, and I think there's a couple parts that could still use a little more TLC, but for speed purposes, we'll just keep moving on here. What I can do is turn off my dim copies to get a better view of how this looks. It looks okay, I definitely see a line happening here, which I don't like. I don't see anything going horizontally, so I might wanna change my tile repeat, and that actually looks a lot better. See, just by changing the brick changing from a grid to a brick by row. It broke up that vertical line that I saw and I think it looks a lot more evenly distributed. So I'm pretty happy with that. What I wanna do from here is go ahead and click done. And that creates a finished pattern tile in my swatches panel. It brings me back to my original artboard where I've got this artwork. I'm gonna go ahead and push this off to the side. We'll zoom in and I'm just gonna grab a rectangle drag and drop that, and I'm gonna fill it with my pattern. I do this simply by making sure that the fill color is active on the bottom of my toolbar, and I click the pattern tile. Now I filled that artwork with the repeat. This is really cool, but one thing you'll notice is that it is see-through, meaning there's no background color. 
So let's go back in and add a background color. The really cool thing about this tool in Illustrator is that you can infinitely go in and edit your pattern. All you do is come over to your swatches panel, double click on the pattern, you come back into pattern editing mode, and you've got the ability to edit the artwork infinitely. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my rectangle tool. I'm gonna give it a fill color of this dark gray, and I'm gonna drag and drop a rectangle to be the background color. Now that doesn't look great to start, so I'm gonna go ahead and come up to Object, Arrange, Send to Back. I want that to be in the back of the artwork, meaning I want it to be behind all the, the cheetah spots that I have. So Send to Back. Now that looks pretty good, but something that's happening, and if we nudge this around, we can see it a little better, is that some of the pattern pieces are getting cut off. And so if you're getting this result, right, you can see them, they're getting cut off over here. What you wanna do is take this object, this background color, and push it to the upper left. Assuming you did not change any of your overlap settings, you wanna push it to the upper left. If you change these, which, uh, in my personal opinion, there's really no reason to. Um, you might need to push it to the upper right or to the bottom right, depending on your overlap settings. But if these are left as default, push this to the upper left. And depending on where your artwork is laid out and where your motifs land in the pattern, you might have to push this really, really far over. In my pattern option, we don't need to, but you might have to push it really, really far. So once we get it, so we don't have any cutoff motifs, we can go ahead and click done and it's gonna update any artwork that was filled with that pattern swatch. So you can see now that rectangle that we drew has the background color filled with it. All right, now off over here to the side, I've got some fashion flats that I wanna fill the pattern, I wanna fill the pattern into these fashion flats. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my direct selection tool, specifically letter A is my hotkey to get there. I'm gonna select one of the objects in my fashion flats that has the white fill, and then I'm gonna come up to select, same, fill color. So now I've only selected artwork that has the white fill color. And now again, I want to make sure that the pattern, excuse me, the fill position is active, meaning it's in front, not the, the stroke in front. So once that's in front, I can come over to my swatches panel, I can find the pattern swatch and I can click to add the pattern to it. Now that looks really big in my personal opinion. So let's go ahead and make it a little bit smaller. I'm gonna hit the letter S to grab the scale tool from my toolbar. I'm gonna hold the tilde key, which is the little squiggly line in the upper left corner on your keyboard. I'm gonna drag inward. I can hold the shift key if I need to constrain the proportions of the scaling. And you can see I was able to scale that. If I wanna make it bigger, I can again, I wanna use my scale tool, hold the tilde key, and I'm gonna click and drag outwards. Again, hold the shift key, otherwise you'll squash the pattern. Release the mouse and then release the shift key and the tilde key. So that was about a medium size, that looks pretty good. I actually don't like the way this looks in this artwork, the inside neck would also be filled with the pattern. So I'm gonna grab that, grab my eyedropper, click on this to fill that and that looks much better. Same probably with these, although if this was, well, if this was printed, the inside of the leg portion might be white, but the inside of the waistband would almost definitely be the color. So we'll go ahead and fill that as well. So there you go, a quick and easy way to create a repeating pattern in Illustrator out of any artwork you can, fill your fashion flats and change the scale. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And for more free tips, tutorials, and advice on getting ahead in fashion, head on over to SuccessfulFashionDesigner.com where I share tons of stuff that you don't see here on YouTube. I'd also love to hear from you. What questions about repeating patterns do you have? Let me know below in the comments.